Start them in a seated position. We're going to start with glute squeezes because I have to get your butt awake. <laughs> right? That was fun. Get your butt awake. All right? So we're going to just squeeze your glutes. Ready? Squeeze them. Release. Squeeze. Release. Squeeze. Release. So I'm just clenching my glutes, right? And when I clench, I can feel my inner thighs go, hey, I want to help. I'm okay with that. I want things awake today. Squeeze, release. And you can see my body going, pop, pop, right? Abs are in. Now, ready? Up, squeeze, hold, hold. So yesterday when you're doing all these glute squeezes, I can feel my booty from that. Don't get me wrong, we did hard stuff earlier, but I did more glutes in this chair class. And release. So you should be able to feel when you release your glutes, right, on that back side. So I want to squeeze your glutes again, tap your knees, tap your knees, tap your knees, tap your knees. Abs are in, right, everything's, so I'm pulling, my glutes are active, I'm pulling through my inner thighs. And as long as you keep your glutes tight, you can feel stuff working. And four, three, two, totally rest, let it go. Again, you should have, I don't want to say, I hate saying the word fatigue because we just started, right? But you can feel that that muscle was working. We're going to slide our heels underneath uh, your legs. So your heels, if you look down, are cutting your thighs. Chest is lifted. We're going to stand up. Make sure when you step with your right foot, it's the side of your foot that's going. Gather, side of your foot with your left, gather. I don't want you to look back. I want you to go, where's the chair? I want you to feel it with the back of your legs. Both legs, not just one, because we might miss, right? Both legs, I can feel it, I know it's there, and I'm going to sit down. You notice I didn't look back. I know, it's scary. Because you're at home, I'm hoping that you're in a safe place. That's why I wanted all your space cleared before you started. So again, stand up. We're going to your left. Side step, gather. Side step, gather. The back of your leg should be touching the chair. I know the chair is right behind me. I don't have to turn around. I don't have to look anywhere. The chair is behind me. I can sit down and feel secure, right? I'm in the chair. As we age, we tend to go, is it really there? True story, I had that backup camera on my car. I don't trust it, even though I can see that there's nothing behind me, I still turn around, right? It's a behavior. I want to make it where you're more confident. Side step, side of your foot, gather. So I want you to think about your heel, make it lead the way, and gather the other back. Just tap it. There we go. And again, find the chair with your legs. So I want to turn it so you can see what I'm doing. See how I'm touching the chair with my legs? And I sit down. Stand up. We're going to your left. Left. Right, and it's the side of my foot, so my toes are still facing forward. Before I go anywhere, I go, there's the chair, and I sit down. We're going to do one more each way. Stand up, side step right, close your feet, side step left, close your feet, right? Make sure your feet are not like smack dab closed. They're under your hips, I should call it that way. Find the chair, have a seat, stand up. We're going to sidestep to your left. Make sure your toe is forward. Right foot collects. Sidestep. Place your left foot underneath your hip. Now, you can see I'm too far from the chair, so I'm going to scoop back and go, there's the chair. And sit down. Nice. So, back to the front. There. So, again, I'm going to scoop to the front of the chair. Nice and tall through the chest. I can feel my heels pushing towards the floor already. I want to take my chest 
forward and up, right? So find your abs. Now I can slide my feet back just a tad bit more. I want you to think about your inner thighs. Pull your knees toward each other. Inner thighs are active, right? Lift your chest, stand up. We're gonna walk around the chair to your right. So walk, 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 walk. Hold on to the chair, give me a right leg lift. Shoot. Now walk forward, side step, find the chair, find the chair, there it is, have a seat. Again, squeeze everything, come up first, abs are in, walk around the chair, hold on to the chair, left leg, up, down, walk forward, side step, find your chair, have a seat. I know, it seems really basic, but we're changing direction, and sometimes we get wrong on change of direction. Stand up, squeeze your tush, squeeze your inner thighs, everything center, walk around to your right. Hold on to the chair, give me a side leg lift, walk forward, side step, find the chair, have a seat. Stand up. Walk around the chair. By the way, I'm getting warmer now, right? Hold on to the chair, side leg lift. When you side leg lift, make sure your toes not out. Toes facing forward. Walk forward. Side step. Find the chair. Have a seat. So, you notice I'm trying to keep my eyes forward. I'm using my peripheral vision to know where the chair is at. Okay, we're gonna do it again. I want you to start using peripheral vision. We need to work on it, right? Stand up. So what do you see? Obviously I'm not in your house, right? But I can see my hands, all of this, right? If I do this, I can see my hands. I'm gonna walk around the chair. Use your peripheral vision. Know where the chair is at without looking at it. Look straight at me, look straight at me. Place your hand on the chair, right? Because peripherally, you can see the chair. Stay up tall, lift that side leg lift, up, down. You can see the chair. You know that you have to take like two good steps to go in front of it. And then again, look forward. We're gonna side step, side step. Find the chair, lift the back of your legs. Find the senses that connect your brain to the back of your leg going, the chair is there, have a seat. Right? Stand up. You notice I haven't taken my eyes off you except for when I walk around the chair. So I'm trying to keep my vision here the whole time. I know where the chair is. I can just put my hand here. Side leg lift up. I can see the chair, even though I'm looking at you, I'm going forward and forward, because I know how many steps now. My body's like, I got this. Side step, right foot, find the chair, right? If you're like going, where's the chair? Where's the chair? There it is, right? Have a seat. And relax for a minute. So connecting, change of direction, balance, confidence, right? Engaging all the muscles that need to happen when you stand up and change direction. So now we're gonna have some more fun. I need to scoot the chair back just a tad bit. Be careful in this one, please. So we're gonna stand up. We're gonna take your right foot forward. I am split weight. I'm going to turn to my left. Sure. Stand in front of the chair. I want to take walk, walk, walk around four steps and sit down. So basically you're turning a circle in front of in front of the chair, excuse me. Four steps. So we're going to stand up, take your left foot forward. You're going to turn to your right foot about face. This is a half turn. We're going to gather our feet. We're going to turn to the left for four, three, two, you're now turn all the way around, have a 
a seat. Right? Stand up. I was not joking musical chairs today, right? Whew. Right foot forward. You're going to turn to your left. Turn left. Gather your feet. We're going to turn. Ready? One, two, three, four. Find the chair and sit down. Stand up. Left leg forward. Left. Turn around. Shoot. Gather your feet. Turn to the left. Four, four, three, two. Find the chair. Have a seat. So every time we stand up and have a seat, we're doing a squat. First of all, every time we stand up, we have to find that core balance. When we're doing this in about face, we're working agility, first of all, changing direction, core balance, all kinds of good stuff. And we're stabilizing our bodies. Right? So here we go. Stand up, please. I want you to take your right foot out to the corner. Take your left foot out to the corner. Take your right foot right to the chair. The left foot back to the chair. Have a seat. We're going to do that same way. Ready? So we're going to go up, right, left, right, left. And I can feel my legs on the back. Have a seat. We're going to do two on the right leg. So stand up. Right leg, left leg, right leg, left. Feel the chair. Sit down. One more, please. Up, right, left, right, left. Find the chair. Have a seat. Now we're switching left foot leads. Ready? Stand up. Up, left foot. Right foot, left foot, right. Find the chair first. Have a seat. Stand up. Up. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right. Find the chair. Have a seat. We have two more to go. Stand up. Left corner, right corner, left corner, or back and back. You know, so make sure you find that seat with those legs. Have a seat. One more, please. Stand up. Left. By the way, I'm doing heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, toe heel. Find the chair and have a seat. I was asked by a dance student the other day, does it really matter? Does it really matter where my feet are or how I use my feet? Yes, it absolutely does. Absolutely does. Doesn't matter if you're doing dance or fitness, yoga, whatever, whatever you're doing, it matters. So I'm being very specific on things today. All right, so we've done change of direction, agility, balance, all kinds of good stuff, right? Um, Again, I'm no longer cold because we've been up and down. I want you to think about your feet for a minute. Go to your heels, pick your toes up. Now roll through your foot very methodically. Feel the balls of your feet, go to your toes, pick up your heels. Now toes, balls, arch, heels. Heel, arch, ball, toes. I'm gonna to go from the side. So think about pulling, rolling through your feet, lift. Roll back, lift your toes, roll forward, lift your heels, roll back, toes, roll forward, heels, roll back, toes, roll forward, heels. Now I want you to pull your abs in while you're doing it. I know. Uh oh, we have a second job. Keep going. Just roll through your feet. We're not going fast, but I need your abs contracted, right? Shoulder blades, they're coming together a little bit, so your chest is lifted without even trying. Roll through your feet. Roll through your feet. Pull those lower abdominals up and in. So you're doing that pelvic floor pull or kegel, right? And roll forward, roll back, roll forward, roll back. We're going to roll forward and hold. Ready? Up, hold. I'm going to scoot back so you can see. So again, everything's really lifted. Pull your abs. You can feel some quads working. You should feel your calves working. 
Now we're going to do glute squeezes here. Ready? Right and left. Right, left, right, left. And you can see I'm rocking and rolling in the chair. Right, left, right, left, and right, and left, and right, and left. Four, three, four, yes. Two, one more. Both glutes. Squeeze, hold. Tap your knees. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Totally relax. Relax, rest. Try to say it in one word. Your quads should feel a little warm. Your glutes know they've been working. Your calves definitely are warm, right? And we didn't stand up or anything. We just did some isometric holds. So go ahead and grab a drink, because it's about 16 minutes in, and I haven't really like made you let you stop too much. It's okay. So again, learning how to use our body as a unit, right, versus I'm just getting up. Because we do bad things to our body. When we just go from here to here, see that? You pop the hips, and then it looks like I've got a beer gut going on, and my butt's all up underneath me, and here we go, right? And if I would learn to lift through the chest, Tailbone is slightly tucked under. Does that just look better, right? This to this. We are very mean to our bodies. Or we do this. And then we don't know why our hip hurts. Because we're overstretching, right? So learn to stand with a little mindfulness. That's a good way to think of it. Hmm, mindfulness. Thank you. Okay, so I'm trying to decide. So Leota, I don't know how your legs are feeling. You can do this sitting down if you would like. Um, I want, whatever you do, I want you to think about pushing and pulling. And we're gonna use a little breath with this. So if you're standing and you feel comfortable standing, pull your abs in, tuck your tailbone slightly under. So I'm going from this to this. And it lengthens out your back and your vertebrae are no longer crunched up and angry with you, right? And you can feel your belly working if you like the belly working. All right. So relax your shoulders, long neck. You're either pushing through the palms or you're grabbing something and pulling. So you have the hands going one way or the other, okay? Nice and tall. So I want to take your palms and I want you to push them to the floor. Push down. Now pull up. Push forward. Push forward. Pull in. Push down. Pull up. Push forward. Push. Pull. Down. Up. Push. Pull. Push. Pull, push forward, pull in, push down, pull up. Push forward, pull in, through the palms, pull, push, pull, push, pull. One more, and release. So when you're doing that, first of all, your hands are working. When we push, the wrist is flexed. So the forearm's working, right? Or extended. This is flexed. I would say it backwards. Anyway, not that you've noticed, but it bothers me. Um, your armpits, when you're doing this, should be squeezing like you're trying to hold a piece of paper under your arm, right? This should be the whole time. I don't, if you need to put a coaster underneath your armpit or a piece of paper to make sure you're squeezing because if I don't squeeze, it drops, right? And then I'm not getting the benefit of the workout. All right, with all that being said, we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna add something. The wrist is either pulling or pushing, pull, 
push, right? So when I pull up, I'm pulling through the back of my wrist. When I push down, it's through the front of the wrist, right? So we're gonna do this again. Again, squeeze your armpit before we go anywhere. Everything is lifted, tailbone's tucked under. So we're gonna pull up through the wrist, just to chest level, right? Chest level, lift the wrist, push down. Pull up, push down. Pull up, push down. Nice, pull up. Are you squeezing your armpits? I know you are. Is your butt tucked under? Absolutely it is, right? Down, nice. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. I want to go all the way up this next one. Ready? All the way down. Ready? Pull, 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 pull. And push all the way down. Pull up. Push down. Pull up. Push down. Squeeze your armpits. Find your abs. Pull up. Push down. We have one more. Keep your tailbone tucked under. Up. Down. Totally relax. Relax your wrist. Relax your arm. So you should be feeling some forms. All right, so we talked about pulling through the wrist and pushing, right? About holding on to something, pulling it back, or powering through with the palms. So what, obviously, when we go forward and back, this is a natural action. When we go up and down, right? Like we're painting, right? You're painting the wall. Wax on, wax off. Painting the fence, whatever you want to call it, right? So we're trying to add some movements that are connected here, right? And you should be able to use your body better. All right, so here we go. I want you to sweep up. We're going to paint the fence. Let's just call it paint the fence. All the way to your chest and down. Ready? Chest and down. Paint the fence. Chest. So this is the lower half of the fence, right? Take it all the way up. Now do the upper half, right? Half, up, half, up. Again, push down, pull up, push down. Do the whole fence. All the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. Because you're jump on tucked under, right? Push down, pull up, push down, go halfway down. Now sweep to the side. Open, second position, first. And again, through the wrist, wrist, we're adding flexibility through the wrist, creating energy in the forearms, leave it forward, pull in, pull, push out, pull in, push out, pull in, push out, one more. Now push down, release. Not that we're doing heavy work, we're doing mindful work. And trying to get things where they move better, right? If we don't move better and we fall down, we break things, right? Um, I'm just gonna say we had a little thing happen last Wednesday and because she fell off the step gracefully, even though she might not have felt like it, she protected herself enough that she didn't bruise. Now, did it feel good? No. It never feels good when you fall down. But I think she healed up quicker than expected, in my humble opinion. Um, maybe a year ago, she might not have been able to come back as soon. I'll put it that way. Uh, she finished class, which probably was not a great idea, but I'm glad she stuck it out. How about that? All right, so back to work. So I want a wider stance this time, right? And my knees are soft. They're not locked out. Abs are in. Tuck your tailbone. So here we go. Paint the fence all the way up. Exhale. Full fence, up, inhale, exhale down. Inhale up, keep your abs tight. Exhale down. All the way up, 
down halfway. Now push, push, pull, push, pull. That's it. Push. Engage your chest. Push. Now push down. Paint the fence. Up. Down. Up. Down. Squeeze your armpits. Up. Down. One more. Go halfway up this next one. Sweep to the side. And open. Pull close. Second. To first. Second. To first. Let those arms flow. And again, it's all pulling through the wrist. 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 Stay forward. Pull back. Pull. Push through the palm. Pull. Push through the palm. Pull. Go four, three, two. Now push down. Finish. Nice. Relax. Move your wrist, move your fingers. So we're adding more fluid movement for the wrist to make them more lubricated. There's like a jillion little uh, bones, ligaments, and muscles in your wrist to make it do what it can do, right? And if we hold still all the time, or click a mouse, right? Doop, 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 right? Our wrist gets really stiff. And then this happens, where we can't like close our fingers, right? Or we might be able to get to here, but we can't do the palm, right? Trying to get this, and maybe a little more, right? This little exercise will increase your flexibility, will make your life happier. You'll be able to move your fingers and your wrist and all kinds of good stuff, right? All right, so here's our wide stance, but I want your toes to turn out. Now, if you're getting tired, you can sit down. It's okay, I'm not gonna yell at you. I can't see you if you're sitting down, but I can sense it, right? So instead of pushing forward, can we push? Look at the knee, did you see that? Push, pull back. Push forward, pull back. Push forward, back, right? Push, pull. Push, pull. Down, up. Left, down, up. Push, pull. Push, pull. Right or left knee? Both knees. Right knee. Both knees. Left knee. And yes, I give a little lean with this. Push, pull, push, pull, push. Last one here, and rest. Being more mindful, and I was not going deep in squats and lunges, because that's all that was. Just getting the body mechanics, getting things flowing, getting things moving, and again, creating just a tad bit of heat. All right, so we're uh, go ahead and grab a quick drink. I'm going to some flexibility stuff. Um, so last night in restorative yoga, we did a lot of get back here, hip openers with external rotation. That means it's rotating out. I want to rotate in because we don't get in that position very often and things get too loose this way and too tight this way and then we're talking about our hips and our knees and everything hurting right so leota i know that more than likely there's a contraindication about you having your knee up across right the midline so when you're doing this you can stay on this side and keep the small rotation in, right? So you're going to get a stretch either way. So I'm going to use the chair for balance, right? There we get a little closer. There we go. So I'm going to stand on my left foot. And all my body weight obviously is on my left foot. I'm not leaning on the chair. So I'm just going to take my right toe and turn it in. 
I have, I'm split weight. So I can feel things stretching in my hip. Doesn't hurt, but I can feel, even down into my quad, like, ooh, that's kind of a weird feeling, right? That's all I want, is kind of a weird feeling. Not pain, not, oh my gosh, this is killing me. Just enough of, I feel the rotation in. Bring your toe back out. Switch your weight all the way to your right leg for a second. Left toe comes in. So it looks like I'm, I'm doing this. My right foot's in alignment with my body. Now I'm gonna shift split weight. My knees are soft, by the way, I can move them pretty easy. Uh, but again, I can feel this, right? I can feel, it's part of your IT band and your quad, but it hooks over here and I can feel the wrap around. I'm gonna close this down. For some reason, when I wear white, It looks like I'm glowing. I hope that helps. So we were here. And it's not a big turner, by the way. So you should be able to feel this aspect. Again, your tailbone's tucked under your abs or in. Fix your foot. Now, if you stand in this position and you have that same feeling, then you have a tendency to do this. And we need to correct that. We prefer to get to here because of wear and tear on your hips, knees, and ankles, right? Your joints, your body balance. So here we go again. Right toe, turn it in. And again, the more you allow it to stretch and relax, the more you can feel. Take your toe out. Left toe, take it in, and again, split your weight. So I'm not trying to kick my hip out, by the way. This is a passive stretch. I'm just turning my toe in and letting things go, hmm, yeah, I can feel this. Um, and again, keeping the pelvis in a neutral position, abs are engaged, all that kind of stuff, just like always. And come back. So if you were having weird sensations with feet parallel, it should be less. I want you to toe out both feet. Shoom, shoom. Doesn't have to be heels together. Right? This doesn't feel bad at all because we rotate externally all the time. When we sit down, when we cross our legs, everything's external. Right? So now I want your feet a little wider than your hips and shoulders. Take your right toe, turn it in. You might feel a little more huh here. So Leona, make sure it's not too much. It's you're moving a little bit with that hip of yours. Abs are in. Foot goes back out. Other side. So Mary and I had this discussion. Mary's a, a retired physical therapist about our hips. And forward. Mary and I happen to be shaped pretty much the same way, uh, short torso, right? Long legs and arms versus our torso. Um, and it's kind of interesting about how she can stretch in her hips and I stretch in my hips, which are exact opposite. I get stuck in a weird position and I can't move my hip. So Example, when I'm on the motorcycle, I get this weird feeling, almost a cramping feeling in my hip joint. And as soon as I push my knee in, it goes away. So the way we were positioned, like this, as a fetus in the womb, right, of our mamas, all right? If you're in your womb with your daddy, you've got a whole story to talk about has something to do with what your hips are. Because we're in fetal position, I might have been more here versus she was more here. Does that make sense? So if you find that 
one way is easier than the other, right? Comparing the legs. It's probably the way you were set in the womb. And it's just where our hips get uh, made, you might call it, the way the cells all come together. So understanding there's genetics involved, right? There's an environment that we have no control over. What we have control over is working it to make it better. All right, so I'm going to stand towards the chair. Nice and tall. Take your right foot back. I want you to drop your heel off to the side. So my pinky toe is on the floor. And again, you're going to start feeling over in this side of your hip. You're going to feel the outside uh, portion of your ankle because I am totally weighted on my left leg. And again, I don't want my hip to drop off to the side. I'm staying stacked. Everything's lifted. So my hands might be on the chair, but I'm not going, okay. If anything, I'm pushing my hips forward a little bit more. Bring that foot in, switch. Toe out first. In fact, if I do anything, I bring my leg. Let me go this way. So my leg's straight back here. I might bring it over so it lines up with my right leg. And then I just drop my heel over. So I can feel the outside of my ankle. And the more I get where I relax into this, I can feel other things in my upper leg. I'm going to just go ahead and come around. Shoot. Push the hips forward. Keep your body lifted. And yeah, I'm being very meticulous with this. Sorry, guys. And again, just move your, pump your legs a little bit. Make them happy. All right, so have a seat. So even though we weren't like jumping around and we're, all we were doing is stretching, I feel heat from my legs because we were standing up first of all. We've done some squats, we've done some lunges, we've done some pretty good stretches actually. And it's all about internal rotation right now, right? So how do we externally rotate? Outside edge, right? This is external rotation. I'm going to take my chest up and go forward. Now, if this is too much on your ankles, you can bring your feet a little more in or take your legs out, your choice. But I like being able to stretch. I'm not weight bearing, by the way, on my ankles. I feel pressure, but it's not like my body weight. And I can feel the outside of my ankles stretch. Those are stabilizers. So when we're walking, our foot doesn't go wah, 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 wah. Those muscles stabilize, right? Don't worry, we're gonna go on the other side in just a second. And come up. So I can only do one at a time, by the way. It doesn't work the other way. So I wanna drop my right knee in. So my inside edge of my foot, and again, you're gonna feel stuff stretch. Again, Leota, be gentle with this. You might only be able to get to here. That's all I need, right? I just need you to feel the stretch, but nothing crazy. This is when I wish you were in house so I could see you. And come up. I'm going to take the other leg again, inside edge, drop your knee in. Ooh, that one said hello, right? This is my hip that I have trouble with, right? Um, it gets super tight and gets this spot up in here that says, oh, you're tight, you're tight, you're tight. So I just gotta rub it and say, it'll be okay. It'll be okay, yes, right? And bring it back. So practice your internal and external rotation. 
because normally we talk about stretching the hamstrings and stretching your quads, working your inner thighs, that kind of thing. We have to get all of those muscles stretched, not just part of them. So here's your next one. Heel out, soft knee, chest up, and goes forward. Wag the foot. Internal, external. Internal, external. That's it. And we can allow that hip in the socket to go, it's okay, it's okay. And four, and three, let's switch legs. And again, when we start with the hamstring, right? Chest up, all that good stuff. And we keep the hamstring long, and then we just start rocking the leg. In and out, in and out, in and out. And it's really important because we get arthritis up in that hip, and we're trying to break that loose a little bit. We're like, oh, we have to move. Oh, we have to move. Four, four, and three, and two. Come center, bring it back. Ha! Huh. Take your legs a little wider. Straddle position. Nice and tall. I'm going to use my right arm to block my leg. It's not my leg that's going to stretch, but I'll need it to stay out and hold me here. Take your left hand up. Now we're going to lean over like I'm a little teapot, and then we're going to open, take the arm back so you can feel this whole side stretch open as I look up at the ceiling. It's a nice way to open your chest, feel your rib cage, lengthen out your obliques, all that kind of good stuff. And bring it down. We're going to switch. Left arm is on the inside aspect of your leg. Take your right shoulder back, lift that arm, and look up at the ceiling. And you can feel all of this stretch open. Nice and easy. And it should feel good. This, this is not a bad stretch. If you have a shoulder problem, you can still do this. Just have your hand on your chest and push your elbow or your shoulder back still. And bring it down. You might want to turn a little bit because it gets a little stiff when we hold for a while. So, 